Hello and welcome to Cycling Weekly's follow-up group test of the best turbo trainers currently on the market. We've been putting the top models from Wahoo, Tax, Elite and Saris through their paces to find the best that money can buy and where you should be spending your money, because the two don't always go hand in hand. It's worth noting that with the continued development of turbo technology, three of the main metrics by which trainers used to be judged, maximum resistance, maximum gradient, noise levels and power meter accuracy, are of lesser importance these days. As such, we'll be focusing on the harder to quantify but much more relevant qualities of trainer feel in hard efforts, in sprinting and in the erg mode. Stefan tested all four of these. Now that he lives in Wales, he was no doubt grateful to come in out of the rain and perform power tests comparing each one against two separate power meters. So what was your protocol, Stefan? So for the power tests, I triple recorded each turbo against two other power meters, a Shimano Durace crankset and some Garmin Vector 3 pedals. So what did the power testing actually involve? What kind of, what kind of efforts did you do? Yeah, so there are four efforts in total. The first was a steady ride at 250 watts for 10 minutes, and that was set in the erg mode. And then the next set of tests were five sets of 30 seconds on, 30 seconds easy. After that, I had a couple of sprint efforts, just seeing how the turbo felt um, for a maximum effort. This wasn't done on erg mode, it was just uh, purely on feel. And seeing how the um, turbos would uh, read for power values of around about 1,000 watts. And then for the final test, I did a couple of 10 seconds on, 10 seconds completely off so stopping pedaling completely and this is quite relevant for Zwift racing because when you get above a certain speed and stop pedaling then your avatar puts itself in a little aero tuck and um, it becomes a lot more aerodynamic and you can get yourself a bit of recovery on the descents and but that requires the turbo to be reading zero watts for your avatar to drop into that position if it takes five seconds or so most of the descent can be over before uh, you get into the position and uh, you can end up dropping off the back and there's nothing more just can know recovery at <laughs> yeah, all. No, exactly, and nothing more frustrating than dropping off a back on a descent. Um, so stop pedaling for 10 seconds and see how long it would take for the um, turbo to start reading zero watts. So without further ado, let's dig into the first trainer, the Elite Duretto XRT. So, the headline stats of the Elite Doretto XRT are a price of £829.99, a weight of 16.2 kilos, and in our test it scored a total of 3.5 stars out of 5. Of the pros and the cons, on the plus side it's got a low price and does very quick changes to the resistance, whereas on the downside the erg mode feels kind of clunky, and a really slow runoff with dropping down to zero watts does limit the trainer for swift racing. So what does it ship with? What do you get in the box? Well, first off, the trainer comes in its folded up state, and so setting it up straight out of the box is really quite straightforward. You just spread the legs out, put the screws in, and it's yeah, pretty much very well set up. You do need to pop on your own cassette, um, but there is the Elite Toretto XR without the T, and that does come with an 11 speed Shimano cassette. So, if that's the system you're running, um, like literally you can be set up out of the box uh, straight away. Oh, well. And what about axle standards? And so this is something that the Elite really shines with. In the box you get uh, the axle end caps uh, for most common standards. And so you've got 130-135mm uh, quick release, 142 uh, mm through axle, and 148mm through axle for uh, more modern mountain bikes. Uh, for the free hubs that it comes with, it ships with the Shimano HG11, but you can also get a SRAM XDR, you can get a Campagnolo free hub, uh, you can also get a Shimano Micro Spline, which is specifically for mountain bikes. And so if you wanted to put a 10 to 51 tooth cassette on and yeah, ride, <laughs> ride your mountain bike on the turbo, yeah, you're provided for with the Elite. So it weighs 16.2 kilos and that's the lightest on test, isn't it? Um, yeah, that's right. Um, it doesn't make the carrying that much easier because of the position of the handle. It's like, quite far around, like it's strained your wrist a little bit as you're carrying it about. But at the same time, like it, it's not a difficult trainer to move about. Um, putting it away at the end of your session uh, isn't a trouble and it does fold up into a, a fairly neat uh, kind of package. Okay, and the, the fact that it's the lightest on test, I mean, what, how does that affect the ride feel? So, with the wide legs, it's, it still is stable for sprints, but uh, you, you don't feel like you're going to fall off or rocking about in that kind of sense. But you do kind of move about a little bit when you're really putting the hammer down and like the front wheel is kind of bouncing a little bit. Uh, you can find yourself shuffling about uh, to quite a degree. You don't have like that just you know, sheer mass at the back of a bike holding you down unless you're strapping down the train with extra weights, extra straps or something like there is going to be always some movement but uh, for the Elite uh, it did shuffle a little bit further than any of the other turbos on test. Right. So how did the resistance deal with the actual sprinting itself? 
Well, this, I feel, was a really good feature of the Elite. As you start putting down the power, the resistance kind of ramps up in a way that means that you don't have to shift so many times. You still have to shift a few gears as you're winding up your sprint, but it, you're not having to like hammer through so much of a cassette. And that it just means that you can really focus on the effort that you're putting out. And it's just a more pleasant experience than some of the other trainers that we have on test. So I was yeah, very happy with the uh, Elite's power curve uh, for the sprinting. Right, okay. And um, what about the what about erg mode? How did that work with it? With the elite, uh, I found that the erg mode was I uh, felt like quite unrefined and it had quite a tendency to send you into something of a death spiral. If you drop your uh, cadence for just a second, it'll just pile on yeah. a bit more resistance and then progressively like causes you to drop your cadence again and adding more and more resistance, you end up in a spiral yeah. that's sometimes quite hard to get out with. You need a proper effort, get the thing spinning. And um, yeah, it's just not a, a very pleasant experience, um, the erg mode of the Elite. Oh, yeah, so okay, that doesn't really sound ideal. <laughs> no. Um, but it, it was, is there anything else, any other downsides? Uh, well, um, just that um, for the uh, efforts for 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, um, with that increase in wattage being so great, uh, I found that you really need to spin your legs up beforehand, otherwise it just feels like you've hit a brick wall at wax on resistance just so quickly. But counter to that, when you're riding around on Zwift, uh, especially at particularly uh, hilly courses, with the uh, road rising and falling really quite quickly, quite sudden changes in gradient, the turbo does feel like, really quite realistic. It responds super fast to those yeah, virtual changes in gradient, mm -hmm. uh, which is a really nice feature of the turbo, but um, on the counter side to that, when you are in erg mode and you are doing shorter efforts and the wattage is quite great, it, the resistance does slam on so quickly. So um, there's yeah, pluses and minuses to that quality of the turbo. The, the other thing you mentioned earlier about how it, uh, when you stop pedaling, it doesn't read zero very quickly, does it? Uh, is, that, is that something, that, is that another downside? Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, when I was doing the 10 seconds on, 10 seconds off efforts, I found that in those 10 seconds when I completely stopped pedaling and both the other power meters were reading at zero, uh, watts, um, it would still be like trailing off going reading about uh, 9, uh, 12 watts or so uh, for the entirety of the 10 seconds and then uh, I'd spin back up, do the next effort. It would respond to uh, putting in the fresh effort nice and quickly but uh, just when I yeah, stop pedaling it would just carry on with those uh, low numbers of watts and if you're just doing a uh, session on train or road or just a pure training platform then this isn't going to be a problem matter. for yeah, you exactly, at all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But uh, for Swift racing and when you are on the descent, um, I find that on the final, uh, when I stopped pedaling, uh, it trailed off, it was about 15 seconds in total until it did read zero. And by that time, and most of the descents on uh, Swift, or at least the shorter ones, are over. Yeah, and so right. essentially you can't use that function for Swift racing. And uh, it's yeah, maybe not the end of the world. You can still uh, participate on flatter courses. It's not gonna be an issue because you're not gonna be descending for that long anyway. But um, yeah, if you are looking to get maybe more serious with the um, mm. Swift racing, or it's just something that you really want to utilize like, all the features of, yeah. Um, yeah, this, this is isn't the turbo for you. So next up we've got the Saros H3. It comes in at a penny under 900 pounds and weighs in at 21.3 kilos and we've given it a total of four out of five stars. So other pros, it's great for sprinting and hard efforts and the lack of novelties and extra features is reflected in the slightly cheaper price. Other cons, it's a less immersive riding experience than the other turbos that we have on test and the power blips and manual calibration that can be a little bit annoying for e-racing. So it has fewer novelties and uh, less immersive. Um... It does, does that mean less is more? Because it, it gets a better score than the Elite, right? So it really depends on what you're looking for in a turbo. If you want to have the most realistic riding experience for virtual platforms such as Zwift possible, then it's not going to be the trainer for you. It doesn't have a riser unit to lift a front wheel. It hasn't got any inbuilt rocking function and it doesn't adjust the resistance of the drivetrain to simulate riding over cobbles or wooden planks or whatever. But equally, if you don't want any of these features, then why pay extra uh, for the pleasure of having them? And so it's quite nice that, although it is very pared back and doesn't have these features, that is reflected in the price. It's £100 cheaper than the Wahoo. It's significantly cheaper than the Tax Neo 2T. And so if your riding really focuses around like set sessions uh, that you're just going in and executing, it's yeah, a really, really good option and you're not paying any extra for what you're getting. Yeah, so, so what does it come with? What's in the box? Like the Elite, it ships in its folded up state and so setting it up is really quite quick. Take it out the box and flip out the legs and you're essentially good to go. You just need to pop on the cassette uh, that you need for your bike and yeah, you're all set. 
What about axle compatibility? So just like the Elite, it comes with the end caps you need for 130 and 135 millimeter quick release. And it also comes with the end caps that you need for 142 by 12 screw axles. Although it does come with the Shimano free hub, uh, you can get a SRAM XDR and you can get a Campagnolo free hub as well if uh, that's what your bike requires. So what's it like to ride? Uh, well, for sprinting and um, those, yeah, maximum efforts, it's really, really quite good. It's a very, very stable platform. Although it's slightly lighter than the Wahoo and the Tax, uh, they're a couple of hundred grams heavier. Uh, the really wide footprint um, that it has with those super wide legs, it just feels most stable out of any of the turbos on test. It's really, really quite impressive for those sprints and the hard efforts. And in terms of the resistance, it's much like the Elite in that as you're winding up your sprint, uh, the resistance increases uh, quite proportionally. And uh, you're not having to shift gears quite so much, and definitely not as much as you do with the Tax, and uh, not quite as much as the Wahoo. And so you can really focus on those efforts. It's not moving about quite as much, and you're not having to mess around um, with the shifting quite as much as other turbos. Uh, yeah, for hard efforts, it's a really, really great turbo. Oh, that sounds like a real strength for it. How about erg mode? Um, yeah, yeah, it wasn't bad at all. It uh, definitely didn't have a tendency to death spiral in the way that the Elite Diretto did. It doesn't have, <laughs> it doesn't have the uh, feeling of souplesse uh, that the attacks in the Wahoo both managed to execute really quite well. Uh, that feels super, super smooth. It doesn't feel quite as refined as that. But um, I've got no complaints of it. It held me uh, have a, yeah, what's that I was supposed to. And yeah, I was quite happy with it. So sounding pretty good so far. Um, any negatives? Uh, there, there are a couple. Um, quite a few of them centre around um, sort of swift tracing. And so uh, one uh, issue that came up is that although it drops to zero watts really quite quickly once you stop pedalling, which is yeah, great for swift tracing, you drop into the end position, uh, there's a 10 watt blip that happens about three seconds in, which will just pull your avatar out of the position. And then it takes about seven seconds in total for you to uh, actually be uh, freewheeling down the descent as you're supposed to be. Another downside is the fact that you have to perform a manual zero offset or calibration to keep the power numbers on track. You need to warm up the turbo for 10 minutes, come off, and then zero offset the turbo and then jump back on. It just adds an extra level of faff, which you don't uh, really want to be doing. And the final irritation with the Saris is the fact that the body of the turbo just doesn't play very nicely with through axle handles. When you're screwing in the through axle, um, you'll find that uh, once you've gotten it a fair way in, then it'll just hit the body of the um, turbo and yeah, not screw in any further, and so you'll need to take off the handle, you use the long end of an Allen key, or just um, you know, a little bit unrefined, it's yeah, just a little niggle. Seems like a bit of an oversight, really. Uh, yeah, pretty much. So what's your overall takeaway? Well, I was quite impressed um, by the stability of the trainer. It's really good for those hard efforts if your sessions are focus on um, just executing a set training plan rather than uh, interactivity like riding on Zwift. It's a really, really good option. It does lack some of those extra, uh, maybe superfluous interactive elements, um, such as compatibility with a riser front unit, uh, doing anything uh, fancy with the resistance for riding over cobbles, simulating road surfaces. Uh, you don't get any of that. It's very uh, plain and simple turbo, but if that's all you need, then why pay more for a turbo offering functionality that you don't really want? So now we're on to the runner-up of our test, the Tax Neo 2T, coming in at £1,199. So its weight comes in at 21.5 kilos, and we've given it the same star rating as the Saras H3 at 4 out of 5 stars. For the pros, it's got an inbuilt rocker and a very realistic ride feel, and there's also no need to zero offset the machine. Other downsides, there's no compatible riser unit to lift the front wheel and simulate those virtual gradients, and also a lack of carry handles means that it's quite difficult to pack away. Being the most expensive training on test, naturally it's also the one which offers the most in terms of added features. Equally, in charging such a premium, tax has set a very high bar for itself, which it now has to clear. Tell me about the ride feel. Well, I think that this is something that the Neo 2T really executes very, very well. Uh, first off, it's got an inbuilt rocker system, and so when you're on the turbo, it uh, has that kind of sway that simulates riding outside a little bit more. Uh, you can get that with a rocker unit, a rocker plate, that um, you put the turbo and everything on top of, but those cost a uh, significant amount of money. This is integrated uh, straight into the turbo trainer. And there's just that little bit of um, flex that's built in, and it's a really uh, neat system, and uh, you do genuinely feel uh, the rocking from side to side, whereas uh, with the Wahoo, with its um, spongy feet, uh, you don't feel that quite so much it's essentially equivalent to putting the turbo um, on uh, just a spongy mat uh, whereas this uh, you know, rocker system from the tax you really feel it 
So it's got that famous feature where you feel like you're riding over cobbles and that, that was the same as with the, the first tax in the air, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. Like that's continued through and it really is quite surprising uh, just how realistic um, the sensation is. It's just manipulating the resistance, uh, increasing it and decreasing it um, to replicate the feeling of riding over cobbles, uh, which is uh, almost uh, quite a bit of a surprise. You would have thought you would have needed like vibrations or the axle like moving up and down. But yeah, it does yeah, simulate uh, those surfaces really quite well. It, is it? Is it a good thing? <laughs> well, I, I suppose it depends on um, what you're looking to get out of your session, doesn't it? Uh, if you're just trying to execute, like, you know, 10 times one minute uh, intervals at zone six, then it's probably something you can do without. And perhaps you might be better on the Saras H3. Whereas if you really want to uh, jump all in, you know, have that complete immersion uh, with uh, virtual uh, platforms, it does just add that extra level of uh, immersion to the experience. Yeah. What does it feel like for hard efforts, for sprints and, um, you know, big power? So I really feel like uh, the realism of the turbo shines through in this respect as well. When you start off a sprint, especially from a low speed, you get that feeling of a massive torque as you're getting on top of the gear, which quickly spins up as you uh, get the turbo up to speed. And then yeah, you have to hammer through the cassette, shifting uh, down the sprockets to keep resistance nice and high. It really does simulate uh, sprinting like, out on the road, more so than any of the other turbos that we have on test. Wow, so you get that feeling of momentum as the, the bike is going faster almost. Yeah, yeah exactly. Wow. Yeah, it's really quite impressive. But on on the other hand, if you're wanting to just uh, get a hard session in, get your sprint efforts in and uh, not have to think about um, yeah, doing all these shifts and uh, keeping on top of increasing momentum, the increasing flywheel speed, uh, it, yeah, it does add an extra complication which maybe you don't need uh, indoors. Equally, the rocking sensation, uh, that's yeah, all very nice for um, longer, steadier efforts. Uh, but for really hard efforts, when you're uh, really throwing the bike around, it just feels like you're sprinting on a noodle, essentially. Like we talk about um, how we want you know, our bike to be like stiff and not naturally stiff as you're uh, putting the power down and uh, the yeah, tax when a bike is mounted on it like it really really isn't. Do you feel like you might be losing a bit of power when you're um, sprinting as hard as you can? Oh definitely um, out of the um, turbos that we had on test um, the uh, tax uh, when I, I did the um, sprint efforts on it um, that gave me the lowest power numbers out of any of the turbos and it was about 100 watts lower Obviously, refining your sprinting technique and shifting is a part of that, but there's so many other elements to uh, really perfecting your sprint um, that can only really be done out on the road, your positioning, the feeling of a bike, it, handling at high speed. And I feel like that is where uh, you should be uh, perfecting your shifting progression, uh, not, not on the turbo. I feel like when you're indoors, it's much nicer just to focus on the effort. And for the tax, uh, that, uh, that realism, I think, kind of hampers, uh, hampers the turbo a little bit. So what was the tax? like an erg mode. Uh, yes, it was really quite good. There wasn't any problems with uh, death spirals of ever increasing resistance uh, like I had with the uh, Elite Doretto. It um, was really quite easy to stay at the cadence that I wanted. Um, if I dropped down a little bit, I had a little bit of a leeway with my fluctuations in the cadence before the resistance uh, changed. And uh, that yeah, worked quite well for um, a more natural riding experience. But when it came to efforts which involved a large change in resistance with the uh, 30 seconds on, 30 seconds easy, I found that uh, when the resistance ramped up it was a pretty natural grade it wasn't so hard as if I was hitting a brick wall but at the same time it was quick enough that I was uh, getting up to the level of watts that I wanted that I wasn't spending too long like climbing up uh, to hit the 400 watts in the efforts and so I was really quite impressed by it in all. That was pretty good yeah really. And so that just leaves the winner of our group test for Wahoo Kicker version 5 comes in at a penny under a thousand pounds and weighs in at dead on 22 kilos. We've given it a score of 4.5 stars out of 5. The pros include an excellent all-round package for e-racing as well as a smooth feeling erg mode. While the cons is a very short list including only the fact that it's not the most stable platform for sprinting. So the Wahoo Kicker has been around for quite a while now with updates to the trainer generally being more incremental than transformative but considering the performance of each edition that's not really a bad thing. For the V5, Wahoo has added feet to reduce vibrations from the trainer to keep the noise levels down as well as to add a little bit of sway. And the claimed accuracy has been increased from plus or minus 2% to plus or minus 1%, while the requirement to manually calibrate the trainer has been removed, you can just jump straight on and go. With a horizontally oriented carry handle, the Kicker is by far the easiest trainer to transport, even for its not inconsiderable weight. And when it comes to packing away, the legs snap easily together, and also the height of the axle can be lowered, making a smaller package size. So it's the heaviest on test at 22 kilos, and does that translate to a solid ride feel? 
Uh, well, not to the extent that you might expect. You see, the um, central leg of the turbo, it might look quite long, but the actual position of the axle is like, quite far along it. So in effect, that middle leg isn't very long at all. And so when you're really sprinting with a kicker, it does rock forwards a little bit on that leg and it can kind of end up shuffling forwards a little bit. And so it feels uh, pretty planted for the side to side uh, stability. Um, but as I say, uh, for the uh, harder efforts, you can end up rocking forwards uh, just a little bit. So not as, not as solid as the, the Saris? Not yeah. as solid as the Saris. The Saris is the most um, planted yeah. out of everything on test. I'd put it kind of uh, on the same kind of um, level as the Elite, but um, for coming at very different angles, the Elite will uh, shuffle about, end up moving quite far, but uh, for the whole time, like, the platform is quite steady. Uh, the Wahoo, um, you end up shuffling forwards in increments as it rocks backwards and forwards a, a little bit. And so the actual extent of the movement is quite similar. Um, the means by which it gets there uh, is quite different between the two but um, with that with that said uh, it still is a better sprinting feel you do feel more stable even for that rocking uh, than you do with the tax. So how does the resistance respond to sprint efforts? Um, so I'd say that it slots in just between the tax and the Elite and the Saris and so you're having to shift more than on the Elite and the Saris but not quite as much as the tax and it's kind of a halfway house and it's yeah it's not too bad at all. So you mentioned as one of the pros that the erg mode feel was very smooth. Uh, exactly, I'd say that uh, it's almost uh, indistinguishable from the tax, which was very, very impressive itself. Uh, it feels really nice and smooth, there's no issues uh, with a death spiral of ever increasing cadence. And when it comes to those big step up in uh, resistance for 30 seconds on, 30 seconds easy, yeah, it manages to smooth those out um, just enough uh, that you don't feel like you're hitting a wall at all. But at the same time, uh, you uh, still spin up to uh, the right amount of watts in a uh, short enough period that you don't feel like you're taking ages to get there and most of the effort is done by the time you get to be what that you're supposed to be doing. Um, yeah, it's really, really quite good. I'd put it on a par with the tax. Right, well, well. So one of the downsides with the tax was that it doesn't have a compatible riser but obviously the kicker does, it has the kicker climb, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly, like the first unit that came onto the market, the kicker climb, uh, yeah, that yeah, is completely compatible with the Wahoo kicker, and uh, yeah, adds that element of realism uh, to the riding, uh, tilting you up uh, as you go over the virtual gradients, and so it, it doesn't have the surface simulation of attacks, but it does have something the attacks doesn't offer, in that, uh, yeah, the front, uh, the front axle can be uh, risen up, or you can choose to pair it with such. So how did the Wahoo perform in e-racing? It was really quite good actually. It would drop down to zero watts, the fastest out of any of the trainers that we have on test. Faster even than the uh, power meter that we were recording against wow. sometimes, the Shimano crank set and the Garmin pedals. And so uh, that element of the trainer is yeah, really, really quite impressive. It's the one you want for your racing. Oh, precisely, yeah. If you, if you like a hilly race and you want to like, drop into the um, area position, like the Wahoo is uh, definitely the trainer uh, to go for, uh, for that. So the Wahoo is our group test winner. So what's your overall verdict? Well, if it wasn't for the four off stability issue when sprinting, the Wahoo Kicker would get a full five stars out of five for its excellent erg mode and great functionality for virtual racing. The price, although high, isn't out of line. It's um, only £100 more than the Saris and uh, significantly cheaper than the tax. The tax and so yeah. uh, for the uh, performance for the functionality that it offers combined with the price, I think it's a clear winner for the group test. And that's the end of our top end turbo group test. We hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please fire away in the comments below. Otherwise, please like and subscribe for more. You, you want to kick it off? Yeah, um, maybe, maybe yeah. I'll start. There we go. <laughs> what we... Shall we just have them? Um, yeah, he could be in it. Yeah, yeah. Does he want to be in it? Come on, come on. You're not supposed to go on the furniture anyway, remember? Come on, come on.